Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani, and today's talk is going to be on functional thyroid testing. So I have patients that come into my office daily that tell me their thyroid is normal, and they bring in their TSH, their TSH test or their thyroid stimulating hormone test, or maybe their T4 test, and they say, hey, look, I'm, I'm normal. There's no problem here. But they know they have all these low thyroid symptoms. Their, their hair's falling off. Their eyebrows are thinning. They have weight gain. They have fatigue. They have depression. They have mood issues. They don't feel good. And their doctors typically are telling them, here's an antidepressant. It's all in your head. You're aging. Or maybe if they're lucky, they get thrown on some Synthroid, which again, most of the time, it doesn't fix the problem anyway. So again, we have our standard lab ranges and our functional lab ranges. So our functional is F here. And our conventional or our standard lab ranges have the C there. And so here's our lab range like so. This encompasses two standard deviations. So 95% of the population is here, only 2%, 2.5, 2.5 on either side or outside of that. So as the population gets sicker, that range gets wider and wider and wider, and it loses its ability to pick people up that may be a problem. So we're using functional lab ranges that are more narrow. So if here's the normal range, well, this is what we're going to be, this is what we're going to call our functional health range. And as we move outside of that range, it starts to detect the problem so we can start uh, implementing diet, lifestyle, and functional medicine testing and or strategies to help heal and address the root cause and bring balance back to the physiology. So first off, let's go through what thyroid testing is and what the ranges are and um, what each thing means here. So our thyroid stimulating hormone is a brain hormone. It's from our pituitary. You can see here, this is our brain. It spits down TSH. And when we have a thyroid problem, it's because our TSH is going high. So if I'm trying to get someone's attention over there, and I'm just whispering, saying, hey, and they can't hear me, I may have to increase the volume of my voice till I'm yelling. And that's kind of how TSH is. As TSH goes up, it's because the thyroid downstream isn't listening. So high TSH actually means low thyroid. It's an inverse hormone. Low TSH means... It can mean high thyroid unless you're on thyroid medication. So again, TSH, and this is the conventional marker that's used to assess thyroid problems. Again, it's not good. When it's high, it picks you up, but the majority of the time, it's not good enough. And again, why are we making assumptions on thyroid function based on indirect hormones when we have all of these hormones below that we can look at? It just makes no sense to me at all. But again, we have these testing and there are great functional medicine doctors out there that are helping people that weren't getting help in the past. And there's like 30 million people out there that are undiagnosed with thyroid issues. So again, if you're suffering, you don't have to be. So again, only 2% of our thyroid hormones actually free, meaning it has the ability to bind to a receptor site. So if this is a receptor site and this is my thyroid hormone, only 2% of thyroid hormones have the ability to bind in like this. So this is a free thyroid hormone binding in like so. And you can imagine here would be a protein bound thyroid hormone, right? 98% are like this. So when the cap hits, it can't bind into the receptor site. So only 2% have the ability to bind. So I'm going to draw that in here. 2%. Now that's important because we want to look at um, hormones that actually have the ability to do something. So we look at our total this is kind of like our 100% picture, and then this is our 2%, what's actually there. So both are important. This gives us biological activity. This gives us strength of the gland. So function and strength. We want to look at both of those things. And then T3s are actually our active thyroid hormone. It's, it's really what's getting the job done. And most thyroid issues, we have under conversion. We don't have the ability to convert T4 to T3. So we want to do that so we can assess and see what type of thyroid pattern there is because one of the thyroid patterns that we'll go to in another video is a under conversion problem. So again, we're looking at T4 and T3 to assess is there a conversion issue. We're looking at TSA to see is there a pituitary problem as well. I hope that makes sense. T4 to T3. And again, T3 free is really the most important because this is the baby that's having the effect at the receptor site level. This is the one that's coming in here. It's about 300% more biologically active than T4, and it's actually binding into the receptor site and making things happen. So these are your two most important ones right here. 
I'm going to just put a little line next to it so you know. T3 and T3 free are the most important. Now reverse T3 is also important because if the body's under stress, the body can shunt. It can shunt more of that T3 to reverse T3 to act like a brake on the thyroid system. And again, when we have thyroid problems, we can start to see a conversion. Um, we can start seeing less T3 going from T4 to T3. And we, when we have these conversion issues, typically a lot of times we'll see low T3 in the conversion side here. So reverse T3 is really important. Also, when women, we see them on birth control pills, that will decrease our thyroid uptake. And we'll also see women who maybe have PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome, they'll have high amounts of testosterone that will cause higher amounts of T3 that will actually cause the cell to shut down, kind of like insulin resistance, the cell gets resistant. So with birth control pills, we may see low T3 uptake. And with women that have PCOS, we may see an elevation in T3 uptake. So T3 uptake and or thyroid binding globulin can be helpful for looking at low uptake. And it can be low, I would say low slash high uptake. And the high being the PCOS side. So we have the birth control side on the low and we have the PCOS side on the high. Next, autoimmunity. 50 to 90% of the thyroid issues, the research kind of varies. It can be a little controversial. Say that thyroid issues are autoimmune. And I have a thyroid issue. This is why I become an expert in this category is because I had to um, just by necessity to help regain my health. So again, thyroid antibodies are very important to look at because if we have an autoimmune complex going on and we're eating gluten and our blood sugar's off and we have an infection that's driving that, well, it's not going to matter what you do. You probably won't get better until that's addressed. So looking at thyroid antibodies, TPO and or thyroid binding globulin can be really important to rule out autoimmunity. So we have, we have T3 uptake, we have thyroid antibodies, we have reverse T3. Now let's say all of these look great. What's next? Well, if we have our thyroid markers looking great, but we have thyroid symptoms. That's typically called, called euthyroid. It could also be an adrenal issue. We may see an adrenal problem happening here, and we may need to run an adrenal test side by side. We may find the thyroids working okay, but the adrenals that really aren't picking up the slack. So reviewing here, Elevated TSH, that's going to be a pituitary problem. If we're seeing T4 to T3 conversion issues, that's a conversion problem. That can be caused by low zinc, low selenium, and not enough iodine. Low T3 uptake or high T3 uptake, that can be PCOS and or taking birth control pills or other exogenous estrogen forms. Autoimmunity, gluten, chronic infections, and autoimmunity blocks the thyroid receptor site. So again, if here's your thyroid receptor site and here's your hormone that binds in, autoimmunity blocks the receptor site so when the hormone comes in, it can't have an effect. So we have to get the inflammation and the autoimmunity down. And again, let's say these look pretty darn good, but they're ha the patient's having all these symptoms on a metabolic assessment, we're gonna be looking at the adrenals for strong signs of adrenal fatigue. Again, this is Dr. Justin here. Um, again, there are millions of people out there suffering from these problems. Click below the video to get my free video series on female and thyroid hormone issues. And if you're suffering, you don't have to. There's a link below that you can click where you can get access uh, to a one-on-one -on -one consult with myself. Again, more videos will be coming your way. Thanks and have a great day.